Alrighty guys, welcome back. Earlier we were talking about the Los Angeles Lakers firing coach Darvin Ham, and now we're going to be discussing um, the NBA playoff games. Uh, before we do that, I just wanted to remind you guys to like and follow the show. Also, we get a number of questions from viewers that come in during the show, so to ensure that your question gets read on the air, I ask that you use the tips and donation link with your question. That link is gsmcpodcast.net. This just puts your question at the top of the list so I can see it, and it also really helps the show. Right. So, right. You know, how many games did we cover in our here? Two. Okay, two. I just want <laughs> just want just want to make sure I'm timing things properly here. You know what two. I mean? <laughs> yeah. All righty. So, um, our first game that we're going to be talking about is Minnesota versus Denver, which was game one. Um, this story also comes from Yahoo Sports. So, Anthony Davis punched the Denver Nuggets in the mouth Saturday. Denver hit back, but Nas Reed delivered the knockout blow in a 106-99 Minnesota Timberwolves win over the Nuggets in Game 1 of their second playoff series. Billed as the continued coming out party for one of the game's brightest young stars against the reigning champs, Saturday's contest lived up to the height. Each, time, uh, each team took its turn in the driver's seat before the Timberwolves ultimately prevailed in a tense win on the road to put the Nuggets on um, on notice. Edwards scored 16 first quarter points, including 13 of Minnesota's first 18 as the Timberwolves jumped out to an 18-4 lead. The Nuggets answered with a 21-5 run to close out the first quarter with a 25-23 lead. From there, it was the slugfest until a late Minnesota run sparked by the NBA's sixth man uh, sixth man of the year. Reed scored 10 straight Timberwolf points in the fourth quarter, including a pair of three-pointers to put the Timberwolves up 94-88. The Nuggers, Nuggets never recovered as Minnesota's held on down the stretch to stun the champion at Nuggets in their own building. Uh, the loss marks the first time since 2022 that the Nuggets have trailed in the playoff series. They never faced a series deficit in their run title, in their run to the title last year okay thanks yes. i'm gonna th this and this i'm hearing you read this and it made me smile because i was laughing at myself what okay first off i am a laker fan so i am so used to getting tenderized by the by the denver nuggets <laughs> so often yeah that when we were talking about doing the, being talking about games that we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. I saw the score. Mm -hmm. Is what I tend to do is the games are. I'm in Europe, so the games are played in the middle of the night. So I don't get the games live. I watch the mm -hmm. games the next morning. Mm -hmm. So I accidentally saw. You know, sometimes you go to a website and it's like you know, Minnesota shocks mm -hmm. Denver. But in the world of social media, there's so much of that clicks, baby, you know, crap going on, you know, and you're yeah. just like, so I saw that. And so I clicked on it and it was like, you know, billybob.com website. So I'm like, oh, just say, I, don't, I don't believe that. <laughs> so I, w I went to another site and it had it that minnesota beat denver mm -hmm. and i'm like oh no 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 so i had i had to i went to espn Tate was to confirm <laughs> yeah that's how crazy it was i went to three websites mm -hmm. i skipped the game and went right started because i saw that i started chasing it i went to three websites before i believed that minnesota beat denver in game game <laughs> one how crazy is that because you're so used to getting tender rides and spank as a Laker fan, mm -hmm. I just was like assuming, you know, this is gonna be, you know, doing Denver, doing what Denver is doing, what they do, mm -hmm. and it wasn't game yeah. one. Think about game one in Denver, mm -hmm. arrested, arrested Denver Nuggets, Murray, Jokic, and Anthony. They call him Ant Man mm -hmm. Edwards. I think that's a horrible nickname. <laughs> Ant Man. I think that's a horrible nickname. I would like to name him Happy, the Happy Kobe. <laughs> Here's the reason why. He played.
plays a lot like Jordan and Kobe. Mm. It's weird watching him with a lot of the same moves, the same killer instinct. But when Jordan and Kobe do it, they got that look, they got that that eye of a tiger thing going. You know, mm. they got that intensity going. He's killing you softly with, he's smiling, he's happy on the court. He's he's doing all the things that you see Kobe and Jordan do with a smile on his face. That's why I call him the happy Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> because he, I mean, he reminds me so much of Kobe, but like he's, in, it's like it's like he's enjoying it more. Yeah. He's enjoying it, you know, with Jordan and Kobe, it was like, I'll, I'll enjoy it later, later. Right now, today is business. Mm-hmm. It's, this is a business meeting. I'm here to kill you. He is like, he's enjoying the whole process. As he's driving on you, he's dropping fadeaways. <laughs> on a team that no one even took serious. That's the thing about it. No one really took Minnesota serious. Yes, they're winning games. There's lots of teams young teams that win games in the regular season and then get smashed in the playoffs, especially in the second round. Young The young teams, the second round is where young teams go to die. And <laughs> Minnesota was like, not us. Yeah. Not, not happy Kobe. He was killed. Like, I watched him. Murray is the Frankenstein of basketball. He lumbers, he's slow, he but he's methodical, but he kills you. And I watched Minnesota speed him up, where he's dribbling and he's running around. And it didn't even look like Murray because they were frustrating Murray. I mean, I'm sorry, not Murray, but Jokic. They were frustrating Jokic, making Jokic make bad passes, making a lot of bad decisions. It was amazing to see. And I'm like, that's another thing when we talk about Darvinham getting uh, getting fired. When I saw that, I'm like, "Yep, Darvinham got to go. Cancel <laughs> Christmas on Darvin." Yeah. Just seeing that, seeing that alone is like, "Here's your pink slip, sir." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's the way it was. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna leave it at that because I know we got more to talk about. Yes. So. Uh, the next game we'll be covering is the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Orlando Magic, which was Game 7. This story comes from AP News. So Donovan Mitchell brought redemption and relief to himself and the Cavaliers. A year after being bullied and bounced in the first round on, of the NBA playoffs, Cleveland is moving on, and Mitchell made sure. This is why I'm here, he said. It's my job. Mitchell scored 39 points. Uh, Karis Levert, Levert, uh, Levert. added at 15 and Cleveland avoided a potential franchise shifting loss by rallying for a 106 to 94 win over the Orlando Magic on Sunday in game 7 to advance to the Eastern Conference playoffs. The Cavs traveled by 18 in the first half and were in danger of being eliminated early in the first uh, for the second year in a row, a scenario that may have led to firings, but Mitchell who scored 50 in a game 6 loss at Orlando and has been bat, uh, battling a left knee injury for months, put the Cavs on his back. He carried them past an up and uh, up and coming Orlando team whose playoff inexperience showed in the second half. I don't mean this disrespectful, but it doesn't really mean much. Mitchell said, we didn't come in just to win the first round. We accomplished one goal. Now we have to do it again. That's the mindset. According to the NBA, uh, Cleveland's comeback is the largest in a game seven since the league began, uh, tracking play by play in 1997 and 98. Evan Mobley grabbed 16 rebounds and Darius Garland hit a critical three pointer after getting a pep talk from Mitchell in the fourth for Cleveland which won its first playoff series without LeBron James since 1993. The Cavs will begin the second round on the road against the top-seeded Celtics in Game 1 on Tuesday. Boston went 2-1 and one against uh, Cleveland this season. In the closing minutes, the towel-waving crowd inside Rocket Mor- Mortgage Fieldhouse chanted, We want Boston, a matchup that didn't look, like an- didn't look likely an hour earlier. Okay, first off. I got a few offs, but uh, this one. <laughs> Listen, 
Don't be chanting you want Boston. Don't nobody <laughs> want Boston. <laughs> nobody mm -hmm. wants Boston. Not this year. Mm -hmm. You want, maybe they heard it wrong. We want everybody but Boston. Maybe that's the way to chant. Okay. <laughs> you don't think you don't, no, you don't think they heard so. it wrong? No. Okay. I'm just making sure now. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes microphones are a little off and maybe they just missed that little part. Um I'm from the Cleveland, Ohio area. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny to talk about this. I'm from a little town in Ohio, Alliance, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of weird because Cleveland, the Cavaliers were on chill mode. This weekend, I thought they'd be training and everything. I'm getting phone calls from home. Hey, the Cavaliers are in Alliance. They, they hanging out and chilling in, in, in my hometown. Now, here's a cool thing about my hometown. We have an actual castle in our hometown. So it was donated to our school. There was a, I think it was J.P. Morgan's nephew lived in, a, in my hometown. And when he passed, somehow the castle ended up being donated to our high school or to our school system. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want you to do today is type in Alliance Ohio Castle and you'll get to see the castle in my hometown, which is right. And my school was right behind the castle. Mm -hmm. So that's the castle I grew up with, which is kind of weird to say, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so you get to see the castle that I grew up with. It's a nice looking castle. I don't know if you'd call it a castle. It kind of looks that's more like 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 an estate than like <laughs> no so what happened was the guy bought a castle in europe brought it shipped it over brick by brick back in the 50s or something like that don't quote me on the history that timeline 40 50s whatever time period it was but he bought a castle had it shipped over built he lived in the castle and then eventually the castle ended up being uh donated to our our school board and that's where our school board holds their meetings and i've been in that castle a million times matter of fact i used to sneak in that castle and play laser tag as a kid so that's kind of funny mm -hmm. uh anyway the cavaliers were there before the game the day before they had the game and i thought that was really weird because you know normally the teams are like shutting down and i thought it was and when i thought about it i'm like that's incredibly smart you're in you're in game seven against a team that is highly motivated. You're in game seven against a team that is your equal. These two teams are so evenly matched up. That's the reason why I tell you the story about them being in my hometown is because I thought it was a smart thing to go on a, a quick little road trip before the game to kind of loosen everybody up and have a more relaxing moment to pe mm -hmm. put people in the right mindset. Sometimes relieving the stress is the key to winning a game. And I mm -hmm. thought that was incredibly smart what they what the Cavaliers did uh, was to kind of relax their team instead of, you know, making them more stressed out. So, and I think Things like that are little things that help teams win, especially when you look at a game like this where the Cavaliers and the Magic, they both play defense incredibly well. They, they mean, they're, to me, they're pretty much identical teams who have played exactly the same way, resulting in pretty much a stalemate. Mm -hmm. Game seven, both teams played incredibly well. Cavaliers had to come back with a big comeback to win. And this is a franchise changing moment for the Cavaliers. The Cavs haven't won since LeBron left. Mm -hmm. So to see a situation where they were able to get over the hump in a highly contested seven game series against Orlando and move on is huge. Like they were saying, if they lose after getting knocked out of the playoffs last year, 
maybe you look around and say, hey, what we're doing is not working. Maybe we need to part with some players here, maybe do away with coaches here. Mm-hmm. Now it's, hey, we're on to the second round. We're con- we're contending against the team, the Celtics, who people think are favorites to win the NBA championship or thought to be a major contender for the NBA championship. We're going on there and we're going to match up head to head with them. There's no revamping the team, bringing in, re, you know, bringing in new players, bringing in new coaches. Now it's, we're there. Mm-hmm. We've arrived. That's There's a whole different mindset. Like the Lakers are like, what we're doing is not working. Where the Cavaliers are like, we've arrived. Mm-hmm. And that's a great thing. So talking about the Lakers, look at the Cavs. They're both LeBron James team, both, you know, two of my favorite teams, but it's like they're going in different directions. This mm-hmm. is a great story. I'm looking forward to seeing how well the Cavs match up with the Celtics. The key to the Cavaliers playing against the Celtics, the Celtics are a better team. I'm just going to keep it real. But can Cleveland play the defense they need, that smothering defense? to slow down the Celtics, make the games competitive, and get a few upsets and possibly win the series. That's what I want to see. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, guys. Well, with that, we are going to take another short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about um, what is next for the Los Angeles Clippers. So make sure you guys stick around, and we will be back in a minute.